Jill Ferris. This is Cooking for Bachelors. This is always the most challenging thing for me. When I'm preparing what I want to cook for you, I want to teach you desserts. And I don't want it to be difficult. I don't want a lot of measuring. I don't want you to have to bake. So I came up with a couple of things. We're going to start with poaching some pears. It's actually not really poaching. What we're going to do is add some butter to our pan. Ah, uh, the pan is just warm enough. That's going to be perfect. Mm. And we're going to put in some brown sugar. Mix it around. Melt the sugar a little bit. I think I'll add a little more butter. There's nothing wrong with butter. You know, actually, I've been reading lately that butter is not as bad as they say it is for you. Isn't that nice? It's not like the best news ever. Yay, we can eat butter again! <laughs> I cut up a pear here. It's a Bosque pear. You can use any pear, but just make sure it isn't too overripe or the whole thing will become mushy. So this is maybe like a little bit underripe. I'm going to add it to the pan and then add a little white wine and cook that down. Oh, that's nice. Okay, now in our other pan, again, we're going to start with butter. Everything's better with butter. You know, if you don't want to use butter, if you have a, a cholesterol issue, then don't use butter substitutes, please. There are a lot of ingredients that really aren't that healthy for you, and you might as well use oil. In a case like this, you can use juices. You don't have to use butter. You can use juice and a little sugar. Okay, so we're going to add a little brown sugar to this also. I'm going to cook this down a little, mix this up. Oh, sugar and butter. What a smell. Okay. And to this, I'm going to raise the heat a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of Cointreau, which is orange liqueur. You can use, if you don't have this, you can use just juice of a fresh orange. All right. Very nice. Okay, that's good. That's a nice sizzle. Let's see if I like it. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really good because that stuff is strong. That's like has a brandy quality. I'm going to take my banana and I'm going to cut it in quarters. So I'm going to cut it in half and then lengthwise. Oh, that is good. Okay, I'm going to put this in our pan. So this is like really easy, really creative. I mean, all we're doing is taking some fruit, one piece of fruit that you have in your house, you know, a pear, a banana, sugar and butter, and toss it both ways, toss it through, and just let that cook a little so it gets a syrupy and the banana starts getting soft and all the flavors will go through it. Let's check on the pears. Okay, this is nice, they're cooking down. I'm going to add a little cinnamon to this. Mix that around. And while our pears are cooking down, we're going to go over to the cutting board and we're going to prepare some other things for desserts. Okay, the first thing we're going to do over here is make whipped cream. <laughs> Alright, so we're using actually, a, uh, I have an organic sugar here. And we're going to put a little sugar in the blender and we're going to Make it like a powder so that it will blend within the milk. Okay, that's ready to go. That's right. Mmm, I can smell the sugar. Okay, we're putting some vanilla. Just a, like a little bit, a little drizzle. And then some heavy cream. And we're going to whip it. It's going to make a lot of noise. Whoa, whoa. I'm going to taste it. Oh, that's good. It's good. 
When you do, when you whip cream in a blender, it's usually a little denser than when you use beaters. You can also use hand mixers, but this is easier if you have a blender. Now what we're gonna do is, I was trying to think of a way I could do sort of a pie thing, but, um, and the graham cracker crust is really easy to make because you just uh, use butter and a little sugar and then you press it into a pan. But then I thought of what toppings can you make with that. So, and I didn't want you to have to make custards. So what I decided to do is make a crumble that was actually gonna go on top of the fruit instead of underneath the fruit. So I have two, this is a very small amount, just two graham crackers here. Graham crackers, my son always says if we're eating graham crackers, all the good cookies are gone. But I happen to love having graham crackers and they really go with a lot of things. We're gonna put some butter in it in small pieces. So we're gonna break it up into little pieces. So not too much, a couple of spoonfuls it looks like. And then we'll put a little of the sugar in. Now we don't want this to be pasty. We want it to be a crumble, so don't chop it too long. This is actually a mini processor. It chops and grinds. And as soon as you see it flowing around consistently, then you know it's ready. That is beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this little crumble here. I'm just gonna eat it. Mmm, that's great. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna plate this first. Here's our pears. Let's get our pears out. Look at that, they smell delicious. There's a little bit of syrup in here. You're just gonna make a nice arrangement. Overlapping them a little. And you can pour some of the sauce on the plate right over the pears. This is wonderful. It was wine, butter, sugar, a little cinnamon, and the pears. The pear juice and the wine infused together and now we put a little crumble on, sprinkle it over. So it's like an upside down pie. That's nice. And then some whipped cream. Oh, look at that. This whipped cream is very uh, creamy in color because I used the natural organic sugar. And then we're gonna top that with some berries. This is very impressive. Okay, so we're gonna make a sundae. You know, not everything has to be really fancy. And it just, ooh, look at this, organic vanilla ice cream with the beads in it, little vanilla seeds. What's with this ice cream? It likes to jump out. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some cashews to it. And I'm just gonna crush them in my fingers. You can also use a little, you can crush them under a piece of paper towel and bang them with something, but this is fine. And they don't have to be that small. And I'm just gonna layer it this way, so I'm gonna put some honey. This is the nut and honey sundae. Honey. And I think it's the scooper. Maybe I'll use a spoon instead. The vanilla ice cream, it's a jumping bean. It's a jumping vanilla bean. Okay, and then some more nuts. And just break them up, and that's just a simple thing. So you can use anything again. You can use any nuts you like. You can use almonds, you can use pecans. These are cashews. You can use honey. You can use a chocolate syrup. That's it, it's a little extra flavor. It shows that you thought about something, that you didn't just buy a cake from the store, that you took care. And as a special treat, my wonderful friend Monica has a company called Painter Girl Chocolates. She's a painter, and many of the uh, chocolates represent painters. This box happens to be a Frida box for Frida Kahlo. And the chocolates have Mexican flavors in them. So we're gonna add this. It's beautiful, it actually has a picture of Frida. 
and I'm gonna add this to our sundae. Thank you, Monica. Now we're gonna put some ice cream on our plate and put the bananas on top of it. You can use any flavor ice cream you like. Vanilla is nice because there's so many complex flavors in the fruits that we prepared that a plain vanilla is really gonna complement it. And then we just take our bananas. Oh, very nice and syrupy. The bananas are soft, buttery flavor, the orange. Drizzle the syrup. And to complement this, I'm actually gonna drizzle a little basil flakes on it, ribbons. And here's your bananas and your sundae. So making desserts don't have to be baked. Be creative and show that you care. Have fun.